Boris Zelyev, the lead author of Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon 1, Observations of Events, from the main astronomical observatory, NAS of Ukraine, was contacted by All Things Unexplained to appear on the podcast or to answer some questions via email or phone. He has yet to respond to this request. All Things Unexplained Hosted by Dr. Mounts Let's face it, we were always ready to roll without him anyway. (laughs) C.J. Derringer Ain't nobody perfect, right? And Smitty Neves I've never planned out hardly anything my whole life. I just free ball. Featuring Cajun Man I'm just old nobody, somebody looking for somebody. Previously on All Things Unexplained. I'm going to bring figure seven back up because it's just fascinating. There's the monolith. That's what I'm calling it. They call it a phantom. It emits no light and absorbs all radiation or light around it. Figure eight here I thought was interesting. This the color charts of the phantom object. And again, this is an object with zero albedo or albedo. This means that the object is a completely black body that does not emit and absorbs all the radiation falling on it. They say we see it only because it shields radiation in the atmosphere due to Rayleigh or Raleigh scattering. I thought that was an interesting chart, interesting color line graph there. I Okay, I'm having some thoughts here. So let's land the plane soon so we can talk. <laughs> sure. Let me run run through a couple more figures here. Here's a phantom object against the background of the moon again. Again, this is a this is a dark one. I'm having a hard time interpreting this one. It basically looks like a blob moving across the sky I thought figure 13 here was interesting a composite image with the phantom objects and bright swifts now this one is indeed interesting it kind of reminds me of a black and white war photo I mean like the kind used to see in time magazine for example right it also reminds me of something else that we recently discovered what's that those starlink satellites all being launched at the exact same location in the sky yes you are correct like that's what it, was. it does remind me of that except for the three black monoliths in the sky <laughs> with them <laughs> right you see the bright objects so we're looking at oh no i didn't see the bright objects i was looking oh. at the dark objects so th- this is actually a composite line of trajectory that it's in yeah well this is actually the bright objects with the dark objects Mm, okay. But they're not happening in the same sphere. So how are they getting that? Oh, a composite image. Okay. Yes. And this Facebook user says, our teacher also taught nuclear physics at Ole Miss. Okay. I'm intrigued. I admit. All right. Again, they repeat after figure 19 what we just saw with that composite image. They see UFOs everywhere. They observe a significant number of objects whose nature is not clear. Let's take a look at this. Here's the phantom crosses the image of the falcon. So the falcon's a bright object. Here we can see, I don't know, it reminds me of just a a hot thermal blob with something cold crossing it and how it would look on thermal imagery. That's all I can describe it as. Again, they're seeing both in the sky at the same time. CJ... It does make me wonder. They're bright in the upper atmosphere, dark in the lower atmosphere. Again, I'm going to go back to cloaking, right? This this seems logical mm-hmm. to me that perhaps they would cloak as they approach the surface. Right. In other words, what I'm trying to say is, or wonder, and they don't even speculate, which is too bad. Are they the same objects? Thing. Yeah, I mean, if they're traveling at the same speed. Yes. 
or relatively the same speed. You have to take into account different factors in different spheres. But yeah, it would seem certainly a possibility. Figure 21 shows more two-side observations of bright objects here. We've got a listener comment here. Think of the moon as Earth. Earth does not admit light, yet you can see it in space from the sun's reflection, and these objects may be the same. That's a great point, I think. Um, I, We need to get into discussion. Yeah, so wrapping <laughs> up the conclusion of the paper here, they concluded with, they observed a broad range of UAPs everywhere, significant the the number the nature of the objects just not clear single group squadrons of the ships they call them ships were detected moving super fast some phantoms were in the lower atmosphere there are the dark ones and the um, bright ones were in the upper atmosphere with satellites and everything else very interesting all right thoughts questions analysis okay what we got Well, I wish that they would have speculated in their paper. Um, I also wish I would know when these observations occurred because things that jumped out to me were absorb all of the radiation. And when you think about Ukraine and you think about the war in Ukraine, one thing that we hear often is nuclear power plants. And the largest nuclear power plant in Europe is in Ukraine. So you have to wonder if you have these objects during wartime that can absorb radiation and they're in Ukraine's area, you know, what are they doing? Are these from a different country? Are they from a different planet? Who knows? But it does give me pause when I hear exactly what they're capable of and it's occurring over a war-torn country that has nuclear power plants. Yes, absolutely. Brilliant observation. Of course, we've had reports of UFOs associated with nuclear entities for decades now, right? Decades. Really fascinating. CJ, I want to circle back to a disturbing thought I had today, right before we came on air. Remember, we had an exclusive with Chris Eberhardt from the U.S. Sun, who had sources within the Air Force tell him, and by the way, you remember how nervous he was talking about this. He was very hesitant to not reveal too much, but his sources revealed our military and other militaries are firing on UAPs in active war zones. Right. Okay. And now we have this paper come out saying that UAPs are filling the sky of an active war zone. You know, Chris Eberhardt obviously would not reveal what the war zones were, but, you know, do are we looking at the answer here? <laughs> yeah. It would sound like it seems like that's a lot of UAPs to be flying around in one area. And, you know... I- Part of me just wonders if this is some sort of government technology that some government needed to test and the war in Ukraine was encouraged or allowed to happen. Oh, yeah. So we could test some things out. Oh, yeah. Very, very disturbing. Another one question I had was the title of this paper said Roman numeral one observation. Is this just the beginning of their paper's? The beginning of the scientific method, right? Observe, gather information, create a hypothesis. Are we are we going to see more chapters? They don't say. I mean, they had literally titled this one, chapter one, observations. Yeah. I mean, what's the next step? They shoot one down and figure out what it is. Well, yeah. So another question I had. Has either one of you seen the television show The Boys on Amazon? Nope. So it's basically about superheroes, but it's kind of like a dark side. In episode one, the very beginning, dude's walking down the street with his girlfriend, right? They're having a great day. Sun's out. She's got flowers. He's about to ask her to marry him. Then all of a sudden, she explodes right in front of him. Mm. Yeah, right? He has no idea what happened. But you want to know what happened? There's a superhero. Think Flash. 
You can yeah. think Quicksilver. He can move super fast, right? So fast you can't even see him. He's running down the streets of New York City, not paying attention where he goes through. What happens when he hits the lady? She explodes. So what I wonder is, hey, if our skies are full of objects moving at 33,000 miles per hour, isn't it inevitable that something really disastrous is going to happen? I mean, it seems like something is going to get hit. Or has happened already. True. How many unexplained airplane crashes and things do we have? A lot. Malaysian Airlines, right? Right. Where is it? If I'm not mistaken, nobody knows to this day what happened to it. How often do we hear? We don't know why this plane went down. Also, I wondered, lastly, do they speed up? Do they slow down? Did they change directions? To me, that seems like a big deal. Satellites aren't doing that. UFOs are. But they never address that. Do they speed up? Do they ch- did they change directions? It would have been great to have some other it's conclusions. On that one chart, it looked like, no, they didn't change directions. Right. Like the trajectory stayed the same. It's not like they were going sideways. It's like a straight line. But if you think about it, it does relate to the, what our Navy pilots have said, that, hey, they're tracking a UFO, then all of a sudden, boom, it just shoots away. Nothing right. they can do about it. And by the way, our fighter jets, I believe, travel approximately 2,000 miles per hour, or no, 1,000 miles per hour. <sighs> so if they can instantly shoot to 33,000 miles per hour, then it actually totally apl- relates to what they've been saying. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't, and you would not be able to see that with the naked eye. There's no way. Right. Also, did they observe them moving from different layers or, you know, through different layers of the atmosphere? Did they observe them moving into water? They didn't address that either. Right. How about into space? But CJ and Chrissy, I'll give you all the final thoughts on this. Go for it. I don't want you to think I'm crazy about what I think it might be. <laughs> I know. Let's hear it. That's why you People me tune here. in for crazy. People tune in for huh? crazy. <laughs> um. I think that they're spaceships and I think that um, there are a lot of people that have probably been um, taken from underground tunnels and into the spaceship in order to get healed from a lot of the stuff that's going on. That's what I think. Oh, so you think that maybe they're getting taken from, from Mm -hmm. Ukraine? From the planet. And then being taken off planet to be healed. That's what I think. That's a hot take. Or or it could be the bad people getting on a spaceship and going. But the shape of that um, that ship reminds me of one that I heard Ishmael Perez discuss. He said that some of them look like this and then others look like this big old long cylinder thing. And it's just a whole city pretty much in the sky that just like floats. He said that that is a type of, of spaceship. Stay tuned. So I don't know if you guys are uh, have ever heard of him, but he's pretty cool. He calls himself a um, galactic ambassador. Let me look him up real quick. He uh, he has a book called the Co- Our Cosmic Origins. He's really active on Instagram. So, but you got to be careful because a lot of people like this. Um, they have a lot of imposters. You know, as soon as I started following him, because you have to go in the description of some of these videos in order to find the links to find these people. And so that's when, you know, I started following him on Instagram and um, and YouTube. But I tried to find him today on YouTube and a lot of his videos were taken down. And I think because of the nature of the topics, he only leaves them up for a short period of time and takes them down because he still wants to be able to get his message out there. And yeah. so, um, you know, he's on Rumble and BitChute. So, um those platforms stay up. And then sometimes, you know, he's, he's talking on a, like a live Instagram and that doesn't get taken down, but he may take it down later, you know, cause you have the ability to do that. Um, right. but he is, it's quite interesting. He said that, um, you know, I don't, I know you were asking about the end of this, uh, this paper and our thoughts. And that's what I think it is just from, you know, what we hear. And I just think it's interesting just to see, you know, this is such a huge topic and people think it's, you know, 
craziness to talk like this, but um, but then there's so many different, I guess, genres within the topic because I'm going in one direction and you guys are going in another direction. And I just think it's interesting. I think everybody has a little bit of the truth. Yeah. You don't know. Hopefully one day we'll find out. Definitely. Right. <laughs> And the people that have the most important parts of the truth are keeping those pieces from others. <laughs> so nobody yeah. can see the whole picture. Yeah, I definitely think our government is working with media to keep things from us so that uh, we're easier to be controlled. CJ, final thought on the Ukrainian UAP study. Yeah, my final thought is that I think that there's something potentially groundbreaking here, and unfortunately, we don't have enough. We don't have enough info. I would like to know more about when the study happened. I would like to know more about how long the study went on for. I would like to know what their next steps are or what the uses might be. I do think it's wild to know that there are this many UAPs that are now detectable thanks to their technology in our in our atmosphere. Um, I I don't have any direct thoughts on what I think that they might be other than, you know, I do think that government agencies know that they are there. We'll see. You've been listening to All Things Unexplained. If you liked this podcast, please do give us a five-star rating and leave us a review. If you would like to hear more All Things Unexplained, be sure to follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Our show depends on the support of listeners like you. Find us on Venmo under the business accounts. Just look for at Bigfoot UFO. If you can't get enough of us, go ahead and check us out at allthings-unexplained.com. A special thanks to our producer, director, sound mixer, editor, and the man who wears far too many hats. No, seriously, he wears a lot of hats. Dr. Tim Mounts. Without you, we couldn't keep the lights on. Thanks for listening to All Things Unexplained.